In Privacy Watch, have you ever wondered what actually happens to your iPhone when you charge it while you sleep at night? One man took it upon himself to find out. A technology columnist for the Washington Post chronicled a privacy experiment conducted over the course of a week. The results showed that more than 5,000 hidden app trackers gained access to his personal data without his knowledge. Most of this happened in the middle of the night. Jeffrey Fowler wrote that article and joins me now from San Francisco. Jeffrey, this is eye-opening. You write that our data has a, quote, secret life in many of the devices we use today and that we have a giant blind spot when it comes to data companies probing our phones. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, well, we've now gotten used to the idea that on the web, when you're using a web browser, there are all these cookies and trackers on websites. And now, because of some laws in Europe, many of them have to even let us know. Pops up a little notice. Hey, this site has cookies. This site has trackers. But we have nothing like that on our phones, on the apps that we use every day. And it turns out they're tracking us just as much as the websites are. Um, very commonly, let's take an app like DoorDash. I found that you open up DoorDash, and it's going to also link up to nine different trackers that are getting various kinds of personal information from the app. Could be your email address, could be your phone number, could be your GPS uh, location. Um, in the case of DoorDash, it also even sends a ping to Google and to Facebook to let you know that you that you just op- to let them know that you just opened the DoorDash app. So there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes on our phones with these apps we use every day. Well, so why are app makers using trackers in the first place? And then what are they doing with that? It sounds like incredible volume of data. Yeah, it is an incredible volume of data. You mentioned earlier that uh, I found 5,400 trackers over the course of a week. If you tallied all of that up and spread it over a month, so multiplied it by four, it would be 1.5 gigabytes of data. To put wow. that in some context, the basic plan that you get from AT&T is only three gigabytes. So that's <laughs> half of your half of your plan right there just to trackers doing things you don't necessarily want them to be doing. So why do these apps use them? Really good question. It's a variety of reasons, and these trackers do a range of things. It can be anything from completely innocuous stuff like trying to spot fraud in apps or trying to help app makers uh, figure out how we're using the app so they can make tweaks and improvements. And on the other end, there are there's a world of data brokers and advertising companies that want to see what you're doing so they can target you with ads or maybe even sell that data on. The the way that I define uh, trackers for the purposes of my my column in the Post is that um, I worked with a company called Disconnect. It's a San Francisco privacy company, and they spend all of their time trying to look at and understand trackers. And to them, a tracker is a company that takes our data, our personal data, and stores it and doesn't necessarily have consumer-friendly policies about what they do with it. They don't have rules like how often they delete it or making sure that they do delete it, or making sure they protect it. So it's a pretty rampant practice across many of the apps we use. Well, in the piece you write that you were disappointed that the, quote, data free-for-all was happening on an iPhone, should Apple be held accountable when it comes to protecting our data? I think very much so. Earlier this year at the big CES tech show in Las Vegas, um, Apple ran a big billboard to sort of poke fun at everybody else in the tech industry. And it said, what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone. Well, what I found in my experiment, even at night, shows that that really isn't true. So Apple has set this bar for itself, and it's made people believe that it is doing something extra to make sure that our data is protected on our iPhones. Now, in certain ways, it it is protecting the data on our iPhones. It is making sure that in its own apps, that it doesn't collect data it doesn't need, and it encrypts other data. But it kind of turns this blind eye when it comes to this giant world of third-party apps. It's allowing them to do all kinds of tracking um, and and not really notifying us beyond sort of maybe putting a mention in, in an app's privacy policy, which, of course, nobody's really going to read. Right. OK, so bottom line here, Jeffrey, what is the best way for people to limit this tracking? Yeah, it's really hard because Apple hasn't honestly given us the tools that we need. One thing I think is that's a great place to start is just do a census of the apps on your phone. Uh, if there are apps you don't use very often, delete them. That makes sure that they're not collecting and sending data about you. Another thing you can do is go through the privacy settings. You shouldn't allow your location to be tracked, for example, by an app that you don't that doesn't really need that data. So don't give them access to any more data than they really need to function. If in doubt, say no. I say no all the time. It's the, the thing I recommend most often. There's also a program that I used as part of my test 
called Privacy Pro, and it's made by that disconnect company that helped me do my test. You have to be a little bit more techy, but you can get a free version of it and run it on your phone, and it will let you know about what sorts of trackers are running and give you some power to delete some of them. And uh, turn off refresh there, it said, or background refresh, is that one of them? Yeah, if, if your worry is that these, that these trackers are going off in the middle of the night, if you turn off their, the app's ability to refresh uh, on, uh, when you're not using them, that will also stop them at night. Although the warning is like once you open the app, it can reconnect with the trackers and send all that data during the day. All right. Nevertheless, some great information. Jeffrey Fowler, thank you so much for sharing it with us. You bet.